Totally forgot to change the title slide. Okay, here we go. All right, who's ever, who likes boiled pickles? <laughs> who likes, or boiled cucumbers? Who likes boiled cucumbers? All right, who likes pickles? Okay, who's ever tried to make pickles? You haven't? I kind of felt like that would be something you've done. Roxy, you've never made, have you? Or dilly beans, or have you made? Okay, my understanding is that I took a class at Reeves one, once. My understanding is you take the cucumber and you cut the enzyme end off. There's a bad end you don't want to put in there. You cut the enzyme end off, cut or slice them however you want, put them in the jar, and then you either boil the boiling brine. Oh, the brine is the like vinegar and the dill or whatever seasoning you want. That, uh, that's the brine, the, the liquid is the brine. So you pour the brine in, and either the brine is boiled, or you pour it in and then you boil it, however you want to do it. And sometimes there's a double boil. And then you have to let it sit. It's not like you put the stuff in and you shake it up and you have pickles. Right? So, like, you've got you've to gotta let it sit for at least 48 hours, is my understanding, to let that, the brine, like, soak in. And in that time, they are transformed from boiled cucumbers, because boiled cucumbers sound gross to me into delicious pickles. This amazing thing happens in that time, right? And so the, the science is that you gotta, you don't have to, it is good to, to do the boiling part because the boiling part softens the skin of the cucumber so that when you put it in the brine, the brine stuff can soak into the cucumber better, right? My parents, there where they live, um, one, it used to be the lake, and two, I'm pretty sure where their garden used to be a pasture. So, like, their tomato plants were, like, this big. I mean, like, they could not possibly eat all the vegetables they made last year. So, they're like, well, we should start canning. So, they tried to make dilly beans. And they followed the recipe the first time. They were really salty. They're like, we followed the recipe. You know, so there's, there is some science to the brine, right? Um, I once tried, I thought, oh, I'm going to be, <laughs> I'm going to be cheap. Surely I can just... I had finished off some pickles and I had the brine left in the jar, right? I was like, I'll just cut up some cucumbers and put them in there and it'll turn into cucumbers or it'll turn into pickles. It did not happen. I just had mushy cucumbers. <laughs> Turns out you cannot reuse the brine, <laughs> which I learned, not that it was a hard lesson, but I learned the hard way. You can't just reuse the brine. So that's, but there's a specific process there, right? You've got it, the, the boiling part is helpful not when it's 100% necessary, but very helpful to prepare the cucumber to receive the brine. And the brine part is essential. The sitting in the brine, that time in the brine, is essential for the transformation of the cucumber. And it's that soaking in and all that good deliciousness soaks into the cucumber and turns it into a pickle. What is also amazing is I've had pickles in my refrigerator for a year. Like, they last forever, even opened. They last forever. But if I try to keep cucumbers in my fridge for a year, it would not work out. They would get gross. <laughs> even Roxy is like, look, yeah, it would not work out, right? So that process of that brine preserves the cucumbers so that we can have them longer. And so a couple of years, I don't know, it was during the pandemic. I was walking and listening to a, a preacher using the example of cucumbers to talk about baptism. And I was, because I'm a past, I'm a nerd. I was like, oh my gosh, that's so cool. Like, I can't wait to use this analogy. And then no one's gotten baptized. And I was like, dang it. <laughs> so I'm really happy to talk about baptism and finally use my cucumber story today. <laughs> I've been sitting on this story for a couple years now. <laughs> but cucumbering, pickling is similar in some ways to baptism and our experience as Christians, okay? So you might be like, what? Think about baptism is you get dunked, right? And when we get dunked, we're, we're, we come out of that water and the Holy Spirit comes on us. And so, like, we have to declare that the Lord is our God. We have to say that with our mouth. That we believe it. We don't just think in our hearts like, yeah, I think he's probably real. We are meant to speak it out loud. There is power in speaking it out loud. And that's, our baptism is marked by one, going under the water, and two, declaring part, of, like when you baptize someone, what you have to say, what you say to them beforehand is, who is your Lord and Savior? 
And they'll say, Jesus Christ. And they're like, or you'll say, do you take Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior? And they say, yes. He is my, they have to like declare it. I often uh, equate it to a marriage. You have to say, I do. Right? You have to make that commitment for yourself. So, and it says in Romans 10, if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and then believe it in your heart, you will be raised from the dead, you will be saved. So you have to declare it and believe it. Right? It's not enough to just declare it. I think a lot of people think, well, I'll get baptized, and I believe that God is good, and so I'll get, I'll get my golden ticket. Anyone like, uh, what's that, Willy Wonka? I'll get my golden ticket into heaven. But it's not enough. Like, how many people get baptized? Or, like, I think, like, a lot of times youth ministries, they'll have a big camp, and a bunch of kids will come, and then they get the kids all jazzed up, and then they're like, all right, who wants to give their life to Jesus? And all this, he's like, yeah, baby! Because it's, like, just coming out of a rock concert, you know, and they're all excited. And they do it. So that's like boiling the pickle. But then, if they don't sit in the brine, they're just boiled pickles. Like, how many people say, oh, I'm a Christian, but they don't look, act, in any way, behave, think any differently than any other non-Christian. And the reason for that is because they're not putting themselves in the brine. They're just boiled pickles or boiled cucumbers, right? Like, so we need to declare it. We need that event. It is so important that even Jesus did it. Jesus was the son of God, and even he got baptized. So remember, John the Baptist was sent, and John the Baptist is like, hey, I, John was doing baptisms. But John's baptism was a baptism of repentance. So basically, every time you sin, you had to go back and get dunked again. So like every weekend, I know Roxanne's like, yeah, every weekend, oh guys, come on, it's Saturday, we gotta go get washed off. And, he, and every weekend, they would go and get all their sins washed off, and then they'd, they'd have to keep doing it, they had to keep going back to it. So that's what John was doing, and then Jesus comes along, and John recognizes him, knows exactly who he is, and here's the story. Here's the story. Um, John says, I baptize you with water for repentance. But after me comes one who's more powerful, whose sandals I'm not even worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Which sounds cool and scary. <laughs> but Holy Spirit and fire. Well, often we talk about the Holy Spirit being water. Like a lot of times the Holy Spirit is related to water. So what do you get with water and fire? You get boiled water. Right? So there's our boiled water. Um, and then Jesus, oh man, where'd it go? Where's 11? Anyways, sorry guys, I lost, I lost 11. <laughs> Jesus comes and, and it, or he says, yeah, this is John the Baptist still talking. He says, his winnowing fork is in his hand. He will clear the, fleshy, the threshing floor. He's going to gather the wheat into the barn and burn off the chaff. So Jesus is going to come. He's going to separate. Those who are truly in, those who said I'm in, those who have carried him in his heart, and everyone, everything else gets burned in the unquenchable fire. No thank you. Then Jesus came up from Galilee to be baptized by John, but John tried to deter him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and you're coming to me? Jesus replied, let it be so now, because it is proper to do this to fulfill all righteousness. And John consented. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went out of the water, and at that moment, heaven opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and a light on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, whom I love and with whom I am well pleased. I think about John the Baptist, like if I was John the Baptist, and, the, and God came up to me, like Jesus came up to me, and I know who he is, and he's like, baptize me, I'd be the same way, I'd be like, I'm not worthy to baptize you. Like, you should be baptizing me. But Jesus is like, no, 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 no. This is what we all need to do. We all need to get baptized because to fulfill our righteousness. We need that point. We need to be boiled so that the Holy Spirit can come on us. And when we are baptized, the same happens to us. The Holy Spirit comes into our hearts and comes on us, and we carry the Holy Spirit with us wherever we go from then on out. And the, and the Lord says then to us, Roxanne, this is my daughter, whom I love and I am well pleased. Tony, my son, who I love and who I am well pleased. Doc, my son, who I love, who I am well pleased. When we get baptized, we are part of that family. And the Holy Spirit comes on us, and the Lord loves us. And now the exchange that happened at the cross, all that sin and all that junk, 
is made for us. When we declare with our mouths, Jesus is my Lord, all of our sin and all that junk gets washed off and the Holy Spirit comes on us and we are like Teflon now. Like all those sins and stuff, they just fall off of us. It's fantastic. Now, Jesus also understood the importance of the brine. So the baptism is the boiling of the cucumber. But then after that, there's the brine. And we can't forget that part. That is finding time to soak yourself in the presence of the Lord. It's connecting with the Lord. We should constantly be going back to the source of our transformation. And that is the Holy Spirit. That is time with the Lord. So Jesus, as soon as he was baptized, he went out to the desert. For 40 days, and he didn't eat for 40 days. I was thinking today as I was walking in, imagine tent camping in a desert for 40 days with no food. That sounds awful (laughs) to me. But Jesus did that for us. And he was soaking, that was his brine. He was soaking in the brine for 40 days. He He went there to hang out with the Lord for 40 days. And at the end, we'll talk later about the testing that he did. And then, even after he came out of the desert, he periodically, he understood that it's important for him to return to the bride. Being around people, that used up. You know what I mean? It uses up your kind of spiritual energy. And so we we need to constantly return to the bride and soak in that. Jesus did it. He often withdrew to a lonely place and prayed. He took time to get away, to be just him and the Lord, to read the word, to remember the word, to pray, to listen to the spirit, to give that time of connection to the Lord. And that's important for us too. It is important for all of us to return to the brine. It's important for all of us to remember that it's not just about getting the boiling and getting your golden ticket. Once you get boiled and you, get, you do get your golden ticket, but then you've got to continually return to the brine, return to the word of the Lord, spend time with the Lord, spend time in the word, spend time praying so that you can be filled up. You know, like when you're exhausted, and like this week, I had one of, those, one of those weeks, you know what I mean? Like every day I got home, poor Paula, I was feeling bad. She's like, I'm still working. I'm like, okay, you beat me. <laughs> She's like, did you send me this? I'm like, it's. It's 7.30, I'm just walking in the door. I've been gone all day. And she's like, I'm still working. I'm like, okay, you beat me. <laughs> but you know, it was one of those weeks where I had like, I, was, I didn't get home until like basically 8 or 9 o'clock almost every night. I had an eight-page paper I had to write, like all these things hanging over my head. And I'm like, ah! And then and after I finished my five hours of writing my paper yesterday, I returned to the brine. I was wiped out. And so I went for a hike, I'm listening to my worship music, I'm sitting on my tree, I'm talking to the Lord, like, and on Sundays, and I'm like, I'm not working on that paper on Sunday. Sunday's my brine day. Sunday's the day I return to the brine. You know, the Lord made the world in six days, and on the seventh day he rested. Even God understood he was setting us up. Sunday, that day of rest, that time of rest, that's your day to go back to the brine. And so my question for you as we go through this week is, where are you in the pickling process? Are you a raw cucumber? Are you a boiled cucumber? Don't be a boiled cucumber. (laughs) Are you a pickle? And if you're a pickle, are you returning to the brine and giving the Lord that opportunity to refresh you? That's a refreshing. When you spend time with God, like... Like, I'll talk to my brother sometimes about stuff, and he's like, we just don't have time for that. And I'm like, but you don't understand. When you go to the Lord on a regular basis, he fills you. He replenishes you. He restores your soul. Our job is to continually be refreshed and restored. So we've been talking about, I have almost forgot my, the whole reason we did this. this. I'm going to skip that part. Um, We've been talking about the Great Commission And so when Jesus was leaving, he gave us some instructions. He's getting ready. He's he's died. He's risen. He's about to go on to heaven. He says, therefore, go. Make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. 
Teach them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. We are commanded to replicate. We replicate because we have surrendered ourselves to the Lord. We are soaked in his presence. And when we feel exhausted and we don't know where to go and we don't know how to do it, like my last group of classes really inspired me. And also I'm like, I don't even know how to do this. I'm like, ah! I'm like, okay, Lord, I, I don't have to do it. My job is to come back to the brine. My job is to continually soak in your presence and you will guide me. Because I have been baptized, because I have surrendered my heart to the Lord, and I give him opportunities to speak to me, as long as I'm giving him opportunities to talk to me, he'll lead me along the way, and I don't have to stress out about it. It's interesting that Steph picked you say, because I definitely get all up in my head, like, I'm not doing enough. I don't, I'm not, like, God's going to be disappointed in me. He's not disappointed in me if I keep going to the brine. If I keep giving him opportunities to guide me. Now, he might get frustrated with me if he says, go here. I'm like, mm, No. <laughs> but he's not mad at my progress or lack of progress. He's not mad at my mistakes. He knows where I am. And as long as I continue to give him opportunities to refresh and fill me, he will lead me and he will lead all of us when we invite him in and when we give him opportunities. He will help, help us, show us how to lead people to baptism, to create disciples, to teach people. Like our job as Christians is to not just be like, thanks God for the great info. I'm going to sit over here by myself with it, with my golden ticket. Ha <laughs> ha, you don't have one. My job as a Christian is that I got a golden ticket. I can rip it in half and give one to you if you want it. <clears throat> and then mine will magically read like, they, it's like they give you a book of golden tickets, really. <laughs> right? But we can do, we do that from God. We don't do that on our own. Our job is to replicate. Our job is to show people who God is and to lead them to him. And we do that because of the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And But we don't have that. We can't get that if we are pickles who leave the jar and don't ever go back to the jar. Eventually we'll dry out. So my question to you this week to consider is where are you in the process? And are you, if you're a pickle, do you return to the brine? And do you give the Lord time to refresh you, and to regenerate, and to rejuvenate you. And all of God's children said, Amen. Amen. All right, if you, have, if you are a cucumber, <laughs> hold on, I forgot to take those out. If you are just a cucumber and would like to become a pickle, you can come see us, come see me. I brought emergency baptism clothes that I'm just going to keep here forever. <laughs> um, and if you need prayer, please come see me. I would love to pray for you after service.